Hello everyone. Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Veda Krishnan. I am a scientist in the Division of Biochemistry, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, that is IARI, New Delhi, India. I am going to talk about a very relevant topic, sources and production of enzymes from the paper Protein Biochemistry and Enzymology. In today's lecture, we will look into some of the major sources from which enzymes, which are the essential biocatalysts, are derived. We will also see the classifications and examples of enzyme based on such sources and also various approaches for obtaining enzyme from different sources other than the existing traditional ones. To start with this outline of talk, we will first discuss briefly about major enzyme sources which are from plant, animal, microbial and from other novel items. We will then turn our attention towards the recent methods that are being explored for obtaining enzyme with improved properties, for example, protein engineering, bioprospecting and so on. As we all know, enzymes are biological catalysts that increase the rate of reaction without affecting the equilibrium of the reaction. They work by lowering the activation energy for a reaction, thus increasing the reaction rate leading to faster formation of products. Enzyme reactions are also categorized by high substrate and reaction specificity complemented by fewer side reactions. Enzymes have contributed greatly to the traditional and modern industrial processes. They have had several applications in the area of research and development, food and feed industry, pharmaceutical industry and other industries like detergent, textile, leather and so on. Biologically active enzymes can be extracted from any living organism. There are three major sources of enzyme, plants, animals or microorganism. Microbial sources contribute about 80% of the overall enzyme production. Over half of the microbial enzyme being used industrially are sourced from fungi and yeast, while one third of the enzyme production is derived from bacteria. The remaining 12 percent is obtained from animal and plant sources. Non-microbial sources account for a larger proportion enzyme being used in chemical analysis and clinical diagnosis. Enzymes were initially obtained from animals. The processes included slaughtering of pigs or cows followed by extraction of enzyme from their pancreas. However, such enzyme suffered drawback of being relatively unstable at lower pH or a temperature different from the temperature of the source animal. The table here enlists some of the commonly used industrial enzyme which are derived from animals and their industrial area of applications. While lipase, trypsin and chymotrypsin are derived from animal pancreas, rennet is another complex of enzyme that is usually produced in the stomach of ruminant mammals and are used in cheese production. Next, we move to enzyme derived from plant sources. As we all know, necessity is the mother of invention. So these were discovered owing to the instability of enzyme derived from animals as we described earlier. Plant based enzyme have certain advantages over animal enzyme that they are animal friendly and much more stable under low pH and temperature variation. However, these are limited in number and also there is not much of a broader applicability for plant enzyme. Some industry relevant enzyme which are sourced from plants are shown in table 2. As we can see a number of enzyme namely amylases, bromelin, gluconase, fissin, lipoxygenase and papain are sourced from plants and have important industrial application. Malted barley acts as a source of alpha and beta amylases and is used in bread and dough making while papain 
is obtained from the green unripe papaya fruit which is a meat tenderizer and also used in protein processing, brewing and baking. Bromelain is another important enzyme extracted from the pineapple fruit. It has applications in pharmaceutical, baking and protein processing industries. Fissin is purified from the latex of the fig tree Ficus glabatra or Ficus carica. All three of them namely papain, bromelain and fissin are protein hydrolyzing enzyme and exhibit broad specificity for protein hydrolysis over a wide pH range. As we saw animal and plant based enzyme do have important applications yet they are associated with some drawbacks. Firstly the major impeding factor is the stability issue in them. The enzymes derived from animals were relatively unstable at low pH or at temperature different from the temperature of the source animal. These enzymes have limited applicability areas primarily in food industry. Additionally, it is said that plant and animal based enzyme contain potentially harmful material from plant and animal tissues like phenolic compounds from plants, endogenous enzyme inhibitors and proteases as compared to microbe which could interfere any enzymatic reaction. Attempts are being made to overcome some of these difficulties by the use of animal and plant cell tissue culture. We will learn about the third and major source of enzyme microbe. What make microbial enzyme different and much more in demand as compared to animal and plant derived enzyme? It is their stability in different environment over plant and animal based enzyme complemented by the ability to tailor these microbial enzyme to our benefit which make these enzyme so powerful. Microbial enzyme provide an important source for isolation of numerous enzyme that are applicable to various domains of enzymatic catalysis. They can be sourced from fungus, bacteria, yeast and so on through fermentation. Microbes are preferred to plants and animals as sources of enzyme because of the following factors. They are relatively cheaper to grow produce thus acting as a cost effective enzyme source. The volume of the enzyme to be produced can be controlled. The raw material required for the media for fermenting microbe easily affordable and easily arranged. There is lesser amount of toxic components like antibiotics or steroids present as compared to animal and plant tissues. At last microbial enzyme exhibit stability over a broad pH and temperature range. Some of the industrially important enzyme which are sourced from fungus are given in table 3. These are obtained by fungal fermentation. As we can see in this slide and in the coming slide, fungus have been sourced for a plethora of industrial hydrolytic enzyme ranging from amylases, glucoamylases, tannase, cellulase, dextranase, glucose oxidase, lactase, lipase, protease, rennet, invertase, pectinase and many more. Aspergillus species appear to be the most important fungal source for enzyme. For example, lactase, protease, pectin lyase, pectinase, amylase, tannase, catalase are all produced by Aspergillus species. Other sources include Saccharomyces, Cluveromyces, Candida and Penicillium. Most of these enzymes are produced extracellularly into the medium with the exception of catalase, glucose oxidase and raffinase which are produced intracellularly. It is also evident that most of the strain used have been employed by the food industry especially for making dairy and milk products or making beverages and confectionaries and nowadays most commonly for dietary foods. Table 4 here gives a broad overview 
of the various enzyme obtained from bacterial sources. The primary and the most important bacterial source of enzyme is bacillus species from which numerous enzyme like amylase, protease, gluconase, hemicellulase, glucose isomerase have been derived. Like fungal enzyme, vast application of bacterial enzyme is in food industry. Production of high fructose syrup using glucose isomerase is a noteworthy example. Hydrolytic enzyme like amylases and proteases are produced extracellularly by mainly bacillus species in substantial amount. On the other hand, enzyme like penicillin amidase and asparaginase which have been shown to have clinical and pharmaceutical applications are produced intracellularly and in small amount which need to be scaled up further. Microorganisms thus present are an attractive source for enzyme due to the fact that they can be cultured easily through established fermentation strategies which we already discussed. In case of intracellular enzyme production where levels are low at time, then we require optimization of various parameters like medium composition, production condition and many more. So the most essential feature for microbes secreting industrially important enzyme is that they should be non-pathogenic, non-toxic and should not produce antibiotics. Industrial usually favors high yielding microbial strain which secrete enzyme extracellularly in a very short time. Thus they can lower the manufacturing and downstream purification cost. It is also desirable that the enzyme preparation must have a long shelf life and stability or activity over extended period. In search of enzyme with higher stability extremophiles were targeted. The enzymes from extremophiles like thermophiles or halophiles are tuned to function under such harsh and extreme condition in which these microbes thrive. Thus, extremophiles represent a potentially valuable source for novel and stable enzyme which can be explored for the catalysis of industrial purpose and development of novel biotechnological processes. With industrial demand for stable and novel enzyme being continuously on the rise, it appears necessary that new microbial strain capable of performing catalysis under harsh industrial condition should be screened. Search for new enzyme endowed with novel activity and enhanced stability thus continues to be a desirable pursuit in enzyme research. This is fueled by the necessity of enzymatic interventions in new and challenging bio processes. Two broader approaches by which new enzyme sources can be obtained are genetic and protein engineering methods and bio prospecting methods. The upsurge in molecular biology tool has enabled engineering of enzyme to impart stability by variety of technique such as random or site directed mutagenesis, gene shuffling, directed evolution, chemical modification and immobilization. Use of molecular cloning techniques to genetically engineer bacteria or fungus for heterologous expression of almost any enzyme has also been an alternative proposition. Recombinant enzymes have added advantages of higher expression level and purity and can be engineered to possess desired property and facilitate large scale production. For example, renin and chymosin has been expressed from genetically engineered yeast nowadays. With industrial demands for stable and novel enzyme, it appears necessary that new microbial strain capable of performing catalysis under harsh or extreme industrial condition should be screened. Search for new enzyme endowed with novel activity and stability continue to be a desirable pursuit 
in enzyme research and engineering. Extremophiles are perceived to be one excellent source of stable enzyme. These are organisms living in extreme environment and are naturally tuned to withstand extreme survival condition and hence called extremophiles. Their enzyme are naturally stable and exhibit optimum activity even under harsh conditions. They are endowed with inherent ability to function under these extreme conditions like extreme temperature, salt, pressure, radiation and so on. Extremophile can be categorized as follows. Acidophile, these are the microbes surviving under low pH condition. Example, thiobacillus, acetobacter aceti, etc. Now what are alkylophiles? These are the microbes surviving under high pH condition. And what are the example? Halorhodospira, halochlorus, natronomonas pharonis. Third is barophile or pesophile. These are the microbes growing under extreme pressure. Example, halomonas species. Now coming to halophiles. These are the extremophiles able to survive under extreme salinity. Example, Salinobacter ruber and Halobacterium species. Now let's see what are osmophiles. These are the microbes capable of growth in environment with high sugar concentration and Saccharomyces species are a wonderful example for osmophile. Psychrophiles are another group of extremophile growing under extreme cold condition. For example, Arthrobacter, Psychrobacter include in this group. Coming to thermophile, these are the microbes well grow in hot springs. Example, Pyrococcus and Sulfolobus species. Another group are the solvent tolerant microbes. These microbes grow in presence of solvent or in non aqueous condition. And Pseudomonas is a wonderful example for this group. Do you know what are radiophiles? These are the microbes that grow under extreme radiation. And Dinococcus radioduran is a classical example for radiophile. Now, metallophile. These are the microbes which are able to extend high metal ion concentration in surrounding environment, like Ferroplasma species and many more. At last, let's discuss about xerophile. These are the microbes that grow in extremely dry and desiccating condition. Example, Trichosporonoid nigrescens. So dear students, to summarize, even though enzymes are derived from various sources like plant, animal, etc., microbes are the most important source of enzyme. Most microbial enzymes find application in food and beverage industry with additional uses like detergent, leather, pharmaceutical industry and many more. Recent strategies are also being devised to enhance enzyme production level and obtain naturally stable and highly active enzyme from extremophilic sources. In this lecture, we have learned about the primary sources of enzyme which are animals and, and microbes which include the bacteria and fungus. We have also looked at the advantages of obtaining enzyme from these microbial sources over enzyme from animal and plant origin. And also examples of various industrially relevant enzyme derived from these sources. Finally, novel strategies for obtaining enzyme with improved properties or production level have also been addressed. Thank you.